So I'm going to talk today just a little bit about we receive funding, a small grant for funding for what we call the Compliance Project. Um, I'm, um, I'm the coordinator of electronic learning and have been for 16 years at Niagara County Community College. And we are currently going through our middle states review. I know it's recording. Yes, it's exciting. In case anyone in Triple C is watching, it's exciting. And they're coming in March. And so we've had a lot of talk about assessment and compliance and all kinds of things. So I thought it was a perfect time. Um, our campus has been very involved in what we like to call um, course quality, online course quality. We've created a blog with resources. We've done training within the state, national conferences. We've done, um, we do course checks using rubrics. We started as a modified version of Quality Matters. We're now using what I'm going to talk about in a minute is um, from the Open SUNY Center for Online Teaching Excellence, the Oscar rubric. And so, yeah, woo, shout out to Dan. And so uh, we've been doing these kind of course reviews, and we have been able, faculty, you know, pretty been wonderful at going through the review process and making refreshes and modifications. But we did, we really lacked in the area of um, ADA. So I'm going to talk about that. And Dan, I'm, I'm going to bring it down, but I'm gonna, at the end, I'm going to bring it back up over there, okay? <laughs> Promise. He just doesn't want to move forward. Right? We're going to next. Okay, so compliance. We looked at middle states in the, uh, we wanted to, for the grant, we wanted to look at compliance in three aspects. Um, and, and one was middle states just about their requirement for interaction in an online course. And that interaction being student to student, student to professor, that kind of thing. Um, and we have requirements that that exist in all online courses. So we wanted to check that. Number two was just the Higher Education Opportunity Act is um, this uh, notion around, you know, your um, identifying your online students, who they are, identity verification. We require that um, we have an academic integrity policy in every online course, and every student takes a one-question survey before they can continue. Um, we also require that there's a disability disclosure statement. Um, and so these things, we would think that over time, since we've always had sort of a course template, that they would still be there. But um, just to I, as I've looked through the room today, I realized that I'm not here at a SUNY Learning Network slash Open SUNY conference where people know me, because everyone would know me there. And you would know probably my name and the campus and kind of, you know, how we've done training for a very long time. But as I see new faces here, I'm thinking maybe I should just give a quick uh, background on um, our model at NCCC. We have been... We, in about the year 2000, or maybe 99, it's been quite some time, we joined the uh, SLN, SUNY Learning Network. We've been a member campus through education services, help desk, and support for a long time. And with that was this wonderful education services team. I, I'm going to, you know, he's waiting for that moment that I, I'm not going to say anything bad, but I'm just going to uh, put something out on the table. So... We've been, you know, under that umbrella, we've been supported through training. NCCC was a campus, uh, one of the uh, training sites. And so, you know, there's these cycles of training that faculty will go through. And a huge hub of our faculty went through training in 2000 to 2003. And we gave them a template. And we gave them training. They're consistent. They put in a lot of hours. They worked with their course development partner, instructional designer. A lot of them worked with me at the time. And so they got a lot of training. They put in days of work and hours. But nobody, not the trainers from what was then the SUNY Learning Network, nor myself, put enough focus on accessibility. Okay. So, Absolutely. Okay. So we'll agree to that. So they get this fabulous training from technology aspects, technology tools, from, you know, um, pedagogical standpoint, all those. But none of us focused on the, the stuff we created for them. Here's this great template. Well, back then, they created courses in Lotus Notes. We've moved to Angel, around Blackboard Learn, and these temp, you know, this evolution of time. Um, so as we're thinking about this accessibility, I want you to just uh, realize when I showcase what, what were our areas of concern, some of it was our fault. Some of it was from how we, the training from, you know, SUNY Learning Network has moved to Open SUNY, and, uh, you know, just my department... Um, did training and, and some of the resources we supplied them. I 100% agree that for a long time it wasn't enough. And we have focused on it the last few years, and every course that we're putting forward is meeting these standards. So we had a lot of content and a lot of work to do to try to help the folks, our faculty, and to fix the courses that, you know, were built in that. I know we started doing online learning a long time ago, so 
Um, we had over 100 and something courses and eight degree programs before 2004. So, you know, there's a lot of content out there. So, I'm just not, is there a magic button that why this doesn't want to move forward for me? I guess I'll just do it that way. Okay, so we created a checklist. Um, this grant allowed uh, me and a staff member to go over courses in the summer and check them. We have about 150 online courses, but only about 50 people, 45 to 50 people teaching them. Most of our courses are taught by full-time faculty. We only have a few adjuncts, and most teach more than two courses or multiple sections. So what we wanted to do was do a check, and we had to make sure faculty realized this was not a course review, because our course review process is voluntary, and it's a peer review process, and there's, that's a whole different um, project. This is a check, and we can check for compliance, and that we're going to check for these things. So we showed them a checklist. Um, I'm not going to show it today, but you can all go there and you'll see. It not only has a checklist, which was adapted from this Oscar rubric from the Center of Online Teaching Excellence. They have an actual rubric for APA, you know, things to check. So we took that, made a, a form, basically we made a Google form to, so we could do these course checks and, you know, do those kind of things. Um, we started thinking that we could review, do a, a check on every course that we had over the summer that was at least going to run for fall. And um, what we found is that we ended up doing about 50 plus courses. But we found that if we did one faculty member's course, and then we would go to a, a course, that their second course, we find the same kind of compliance issues, right? Faculty tend to build their courses similar. So we realized that in order to finish this product, and, and we wanted to gauge, our whole focus was we first wanted to gauge what are our problems with the content at NCCC. I can assume what I thought it would be, uh, I could say, well, it's probably videos they created, they need captioning, transcript, or, um, but when you do course checks, you'll find that it's not always what you think it may be, or, and some of them are just simple, simple solutions, simple problems. So in order to be more efficient, and we wanted, we moved on by making sure each faculty teaching in fall had at least one course check, because we now realize that they would have, you know, it's like checking the same thing over and over if you do three, four, five courses or sections. So with that, um, we were able to create these check, we know, we, the checklist, and we, we could pull report for each person that we did. So these are kinds of the things that are on that checklist, the basics, right? Um, that checklist, if you take a look at it, had a checklist that we used, and we knew what that meant, but when we, we forwarded to individual emails to faculty with their course check, with recommendations, um, with we originally did not send detailed descriptions of what each item in our checklist meant. So note to self, if you want to use the checklist, it should have those descriptions because there was some confusion about, well, did I meet this? Did I, is it good? Is it, do I need to work on it? Fix it? There were some questions. So we updated the checklist and sent it back to all faculty. So for example, a link. You know, they see this checklist, they see this list of link, and it says no. Or what you know, they don't know me. Well, they didn't you know realize that just because you know they're showing the URL as opposed to the text or something like that, um, or video. You know, do I have to have both a transcript and a, and a caption? Or so there was just a little bit of confusion. So we've now created a checklist that when they look at the checklist, they also see um, full descriptions and links to resources that I'll show you that where they can get instant help. Like if Word, if Word docs are my problem, um, I can just look here, the explanation, click here, and I can just get some information so I can fix, learn how to fix my Word docs. So that checklist might be helpful if you want to take a look at it. Um, I'm sure these slides are, are they all available to everybody? Yeah, okay. So we went on and looked at, um, you know, this is pretty much what's in the, the checklist, and these were the concerns. Anyone want to guess what the, look, the number one area of concern was? <laughs> Somebody mentioned one over here? Thank you. Yes. Specifically, it starts with a P. It goes with a U. No. A publisher content. Well, number one, we're doing checklists and we don't have the rights to access some of it. Uh, number two, when we have had some faculty work with us and we try to look at it, in many cases, to the best of our knowledge, it's not. Um, so, you know, we now know we have, you know, faculty making sure they have the, you know, third-party content accessibility statements 
linked from their course um, and things like that. But that was, a, I guess, an eye-opener uh, for how many of our courses are using my something from a publisher that, um, you know, we don't even know or to the level of their accessibility. So, you know, we, um, you talked about doing a conference and we're trying to do different, I'm going to talk about what we're doing now to help faculty uh, to fix any course compliance issues they may have. But I wanted to ask Pearson to come to our event we're going to hold in January and maybe even sponsor it and bring a gift, I don't know, and talk about <laughs> accessibility and what faculty need to know. Um, unfortunately, they're, they go to a big shindig in Orlando that same week, like all publishers. I don't know, they'll be in Disney World or something. And so we're asking them to then provide us some info that we could at least give to faculty that day. So we'll see how that goes. But videos were not the problem. The only thing we found with videos was that faculty who were choosing videos. We didn't have a, a lot of faculty creating their own content. Those that have have because I've done so much training on screencasting and other things that they knew to do this from the start. But we had a lot of faculty making choices of content on their own and not choosing a, a video on YouTube that had a caption or a transcript, right? So um, it wasn't so much them, that we need to spend all this money to caption or tra transcribe their work. Um, so we're just kind of helping them to make better choices. So those were the main areas um, that we needed to... Uh, provide resources. And the number one thing was that our own course, online course template that we had modified from notes to angel to blackboard and we give to faculty developing an online course, it did not meet accessibility standards. So we talked about walking the walk and being the mentor and the role model. We first immediately, well, first thing we did is we went to our resource blog and fixed that because that's where all the resources are. We hope we fix it all. We've been um, frivolously working on that. Or Donna has. Hi, Donna. Yes, Donna's fixing the blog. I know she's listening over there at Triple C, so I will give credit where credit's due. Donna also created our online course template that um, she, you know, fixed it so that it would provide guidelines to faculty and also be as compliant as possible. And then we move forward with um, adding all this information. This is our blog, and we created a whole section here on creating accessible content. It includes any recordings from webinars we do, workshops, uh, and I'm going to show you a few key resources that we provide to faculty. Um, and also, we grabbed as many accessibility statements by third-party content providers, the ones we use, VoiceThread, Pearson, you know, uh, you know, popular ones that we would use, and um, post them here so faculty could just grab those links easily and not have to search for themselves. I know, I, I have about five minutes, so I think. So these are some of the main resources that we use, <clears throat> and, um, and we make use of our resource center. This, our e-learning blog points out to the SUNY FACT site. Um, Buffalo State has a great site. Portland Community College, I don't know if you've ever seen that. They have awesome uh, resources. I have not checked Temple, but maybe maybe you have them, and I should be pointing to your site, but I will do that. I'm sorry. Um, I should have looked at the agenda a little closer. <laughs> they should have been number one. <laughs> Post them out of my blog. Right? Um, so I apologize for that. So we've you know linked to some, the SUNY FACT 2 online accessibility website has um, a lot of information that came from basically the Buffalo State site since Megan kind of led that charge, right? That was your group that do that. So we've linked from our e-learning blog all of those resources. Because number one is we want to make sure, you know, faculty, if they want to go and explore it, they have a, one place to get that information. And some of the other things that we've done. Um, these are just what, this is the FACT2 uh, accessibility website. I guess I didn't know if you would have these slides, so I kind of screen captured and put the, the URLs up there, but you will all have access to it. So another thing that we did is um, we, we not only provided them a lot of resources and specific links to resources to fix the problems that they had in their course, but we put together these 30-minute Mentor Mondays, and each of them, um, we call our tagline is get compliant in 30 minutes or less. And at noon every Monday, Donna, um, and we have a faculty member who's working with us this term to help us, Lynn Brochu, who put together these uh, short webinars on targeted topics. You need to make your Word document 
compliant, you know, video, um, PDF or, or the like. So we've been running them now. I think we're on our third or fourth one. And we record each of them. They're all on the blog. You can send anyone, you know. Um, sorry, Donna, if you want everyone listening to her. But there's um, those webinars are posted, and it's, you can access them at any time. Um, one of the things we did post is we did set up a room to have uh, any faculty want to join uh, Donna at our on our campus for today's event to watch it and or provide the link if they want to anyone wanted to sit at their desk and learn more about accessibility today so we hope that there are some faculty participating and we put together um, we've done an e-learning day for our PD days for many years we didn't do it last year but we're going to get back to it this year where it's a full day we have these PD days for about we have about five days but we call it e-learning day and um, we're going to do that and focus on compliance so the sessions that we're going to do will be focused around those problem problem areas for um, ADA compliance. We want to be more workshop. Like, come on in and work on it. Let's help you fix the problems. Um, building good interaction or humanizing an online course. I'm specifically looking at that interaction and engagement piece of middle states. Um, you know, what makes an online course as opposed to, a, uh, well, I won't go there. We'll just keep going here. Um, a correspondence course. We don't want to offer correspondence courses. <laughs> Identity verification. Um, I've been to uh, SUNY just sponsored, uh, there was a sp uh, Newton sponsored event at, uh, Rock in Rochester, Monroe Community College that I just attended. So there's some information there to be shared with faculty about what's coming, uh, you know, certain standards. Now there's going to be some new additional rules and what we can be planning for and doing there. So identity verification. And then, um, you know, I would probably a lot was learned today would be shared. I really like what you mentioned about, you know, moving away from the law. Yes, we have to scare them. I agree. The first thing we have to start is the law. But moving away for what, you know, how could benefit everybody? And um, I, I think that that is worth sharing with them that day as well. MOOC, uh, you're going to learn about the MOOC um, next. So we're going to provide an opportunity for that MOOC um, to our faculty. We also have one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Faculty can get one-on-one -on -one mentoring so they can bring their checklist and say, hey, can we sit and work on it? And then we have open, open days. You can come out. We have open day, you know, open work days for Blackboard. We're doing the same for, um, for this. One of the concerns I have is that all these opportunities and wonderful resources and the work that we're doing, and we've handed a checklist. Here's what you need to fix, Ellen. <laughs> the problem is that Ellen doesn't want to contact us for help. We don't know if Ellen is fixing it. I'm like that. Okay, we don't know. Is Ellen, is, is Ellen working on it? Do we give them such great resources that that's all they needed? I don't know. So, you know, since we're ready for a middle states review in spring, you know, can't hear the word assessment enough, right? Um, and so we got to think of, I've been really trying to think of moving forward. You know, we're gonna, we want to do a required training. That's why I asked you about that We Comply, because I looked on their site and I just didn't see one yet. But we want to do a training, like we do FERPA and all these other things. We wanted to have one where people have to do that every year. Um, so I certainly hope they come up with one that we can purchase. We purchase, you know, security and FERPA and all kinds of things. Yeah, so maybe you can do that and then I can benefit from when you're finished. So that would be great. What's that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'd like to be at that point where it's just a reminder every year to faculty, you know. I mean, it's, it's got to be short and simple. It's just got to remind them that there's an obligation, just like FERPA, you know. I mean, it's a few, it's not a long training, it's short, but it shows that, you know, compliant with that. So, um, those are the things that we're thinking of. Moving forward, um, I guess some of my consideration is how can we close that loop? How can we make sure faculty are, you know, we never, we, we can't go back and check again, but we can probably ask them, a good conversation with Megan at lunch break about maybe just get asking them in a survey or asking them, you know, what, did they fix this? Do they plan to fix this? I mean, you know, is it a priority? And then there was one other thing we won't mention what we thought maybe the last one um, would be in the, you know, options. but just to maybe get some feedback and um, and maybe have them sign off on something. I don't know. We're not really sure. We're still really thinking about how to move forward. But I think we've been proactive in doing course checks. A lot of people can't even check a course, and we have. And we've gauged some of the – now we know at least where our biggest areas of concern, so we can do targeted and focused training and these webinars and other things. 
we're just hoping to get um, them more engaged in, in making sure that they're actually fixing it. We know we can support them from any new course development from this point on. You know, um, we think that, you know, we're not really as worried about what we're doing now. Our training is different. It's more focused on that. We've got rubrics for it. It's part of course compliance. It's part of course quality. But it's the, that large group of content that exists from hun over 100 courses developed a long time ago. So um, we're really, really trying to be proactive and help faculty to that we've offered to even help them actually fix it. So let's hope that they want to um, take us up on that offer. And there's our, it's, it's nccelearning.com if you want to link to look at any of our resources. And um, I guess that's, unless you have any, we'll move on and then we'll go for questions, right? <laughs>